In this lecture, we will try to use use effect hook with use reducer hook with an example. This lecture will give us an idea of how to use different react hooks together. So here we are using this use reducer hook to create a state for this email field. Now in the last lecture, I gave you an assignment where I asked you to create a new state for password field using this use reducer hook. So if you have already done it, then well and good. But if you have not done it yet, then let me show you how we can do that. And doing that is again very easy. The first thing which we need to do is we need to use use reducer hook. Now this use reducer takes two parameters. The first parameter will be the reducer function. Let's call it password reducer. And the second parameter of this use reducer will be the initial state. For that, I am going to use an object here. And inside this object, let's create two properties. The first property will be the value. Initially, let's set it to empty string and the second property will be is valid and let's set it to undefined. Now here we can also set this is valid to undefined or we can set it to null and it will work in the same way. So here let me assign this is valid with the value null. Now this use reducer is going to return an array. So here we are going to use the array destructuring syntax and this array is going to have two elements. The first element will be the initial state. Let's call it password state and the second element here will be a dispatcher function so let's call it password dispatcher now wherever we are using this entered password there now we can use password state dot value let me copy it from here and let's replace entered password with password state dot value so Let's replace it here. And let's see if we are using this entered password anywhere else. So let me select it here and now it will show all the occurrences where we are using this entered password. So let's also replace it here. And that should be it. Okay. And wherever we are using this password is valid, there we can use password state dot is valid. So let me again select it here and let's see which places we are using it. So here we are using it. So let's replace this password state with password state dot is valid. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's create this password reducer function. So I'll copy it and after this email reducer, let's create another function and we're going to call it password reducer. And inside this function, I'm going to copy this logic. And here let's change these action types. So here let's call it maybe password input and here let's call it password valid. Now here we also need to change the logic for validating the password field. So for that, if I scroll down here, we have that logic. So I'll copy it from here and in the reducer function, let's replace it. Okay. And this reducer function is also going to take two parameters. First is state and second is action. Now let's go ahead and let's call this password dispatcher from within this password change handler. So here I will comment this and here let's call this password dispatcher. And to this password dispatcher, we are going to pass an object. This object is going to have a val property here. Let's assign this val property with the value which the user has entered in the password field. So here we are getting this event object. Let's copy that event object on that. We are going to call this target property and on that target property, we can call this value property. Then we also want to have a type property and here I will set the type as password underscore input. So I think that's what we have specified here in the reducer function. So it is password underscore input. So that's what I'm passing as the type here. Then let's also call this password dispatcher 
from within this validate password. So again, let's comment this and let's call this password dispatcher. Again, we are going to pass an object. This object is again going to have a well property. This time we are going to use this state. So this password state to pass the value which the user has entered in the password field. So here I will say password state dot value. And then we are also going to have this type property. And let's assign this type property with this value, this password valid string. Let's copy it from here. Let's pass it here. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here, let's enter an email. And let's enter some password. And let's click outside. All right. Here we have some issue. Let's check that. Let's go to this developer console. And here we have this error and it says actually this is a warning and this warning says a component is changing a controlled input to be uncontrolled and this is likely caused by the value changing from defined to undefined which should not happen. All right. So basically this issue has happened on password field. So let's go back to VS code. Let's go to this password input. Okay. So here we have this password input field. And here we are setting this value attribute with some value with this state. All right. Now, whenever we enter something inside this input field, it is going to call this password change handler. So if we scroll up here, we have this password change handler function. And inside this, we are calling this password dispatcher. And when we are calling this password dispatcher, we are passing this object as an argument. All right. So if you notice here, this well property which we have created here here in this well property this l is in uppercase so i think because of this we have the problem because when we are passing this object this object will be assigned to this action parameter okay and on that action parameter we are trying to access a property called well where this l is in lowercase but to this action we have assigned this object all right. And in this object, we don't have a well property where the L is in lowercase. So basically, this action dot well will be undefined and we are assigning that undefined to this value property. OK, so when the state will change in that state. So basically for this password state, the password dot value will be undefined. So here. this password dot value will be undefined earlier. It was empty string, but then from empty string, it changed to undefined. So from a defined value, it changed to undefined. And that's why we have this warning here. And this warning clearly says that this warning is likely caused by the value changing from a defined. So earlier it was empty string. So it was defined to undefined. I hope you got the point. So to resolve this problem, all we have to do is we have to change this value property. So here this L should be in lowercase with this. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page and now we should not have this warning or any kind of error. So let's refresh the page. Let's enter an email. Let's enter some password. And when I click outside, you can see we don't have any error. Now, if I shorten this password and when I click outside here, we should have a validation error. So now this password field is working as expected. Here we have created two states, one state for email field and one state for password field. But if we want, we can also combine these two states into a single state using this use reducer react hook. Because if you notice the logic here is almost same except for the validation part, right? Only here, this validation logic is different. Otherwise, the other logics are almost same. And that's why it is also possible to combine these two states into a single state. Okay, so basically these two states into a single state. Now, if we go back to the web page, you will notice that. Let me close this developer console here. So you will notice that when I enter a valid email and a valid password, we don't have any validation errors. But this login button is also not enabled. So why is that? That's because this login button will be enabled. When this 
form is valid will be set to true. Here, when we are creating this form is valid state, initially we have set it to false. But then we are not updating this form is valid state anywhere in this code. As you can see, okay. So here we are using this form is valid state, but we are not updating this form is valid state to true anywhere here. We were doing that inside this use effect hook. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uncomment this use effect hook. Now here where we are using this entered email here, we can use email state dot value. And here where we are using this entered password here, we can use password state dot value. And here for the dependencies, we can pass email state and we can also pass this password state because this you know, this effect is dependent on email state and password state. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's enter a valid email and let's also enter a valid password. And now you will notice that this login button is enabled. Now here we still have a problem. So if I go back to VS code, since our dependencies are this email state and password state, this callback function will be executed every time any property from this email state or this password state changes. So basically this email state and password state are objects and this email state has a value property and it has this is valid property and this password state also has a value property and is valid property. Now when the value property of either this email state or this password state changes, in that case, we don't want to execute this callback function, right? We only want to execute the callback function whenever the is valid property of this email state or password state changes. Okay. So in this case, we only care about the is valid property of email and password state, and we don't care about the value property. If the value property of this email state or password state changes, in that case, we don't want to execute this callback function. And to prove this, let's go back to our web page. Let me open developer console. Let me refresh the page. Let me clear everything here. Now you'll notice that whenever I enter something, this cleanup function is getting called and this validating form input has also been called. Now we only want to call this validate form input when we are actually validating this email field and we are validating this email field whenever the blur event happens. So when I click outside, at that time, the blur event will happen. So only at that time, I want to validate this email field. So only at that time, I want this callback function to be executed. And same is true for password field also. Okay. If I enter something in this password field, you will notice that if I wait for 500 milliseconds, this callback function, basically this callback function has been executed and it has logged validating form input. Okay, if I type something else and if I wait for 500 milliseconds, again, that logic has been executed. But I only want to execute that logic whenever the is valid property changes and not whenever the value of this email field or password field changes. All right, so for that, what we can do is instead of passing the complete object here, we can only pass those properties which we are interested in. Here, we are interested in this email state dot is valid and password state dot is valid. With this, if I save the changes, if we go to the web page, let's clear everything here. Let's also refresh the page. Okay. Now you will notice that if I type something that validating message is not being displayed here, it will only get displayed when the blur event will happen. Okay. So you can see validating form input. This message has been displayed only when the is valid property has changed. Now, if I go ahead and if I use an at symbol and then something, and now when I click outside, you will notice that after that only this validating form input message will be shown. So the advantage with this approach is that now this callback function will be executed only when the is valid property of either the email state or password state changes. This callback function will not get called whenever any property of the email state or password state changes. I hope it makes sense here. So in this example, we used 
this use reducer hook along with this use effect hook. Okay, so in this lecture, I just wanted to show you how we can use multiple hooks within a component function. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.